Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. Today, the Raspberry Pi Foundation introduced a brand new Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 400. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, the Raspberry Pi 400 is a very interesting Raspberry Pi, and that's because it's not a traditional Raspberry Pi per se. It is built right into a keyboard. Since the Raspberry Pi is built right into the keyboard, everything will have to plug into the keyboard. So on the back of the keyboard is where all of the ports reside. We can see GPIO pins, the micro SD card slot, two HDMI outs, the USB-C for power, two high-speed USB ports, one regular speed USB port, and an ethernet port. Now looking at the Pi 400 technical specifications and we come across some very interesting information. First and foremost, it is using the exact same chip as the standard Pi 4 but the Pi 400 is clocked from factory a little bit faster. This one is clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. The stock Pi 4 is clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. The Pi 400 also comes with four gigabytes of RAM and there is no options here for any other versions. They might release a different one in the future, but for now it's coming stock with four gigs, which isn't bad at all, that's quite a bit. There's also going to be one less USB port than the stock Pi 4. The Pi 400 will also be available in a bunch of different keyboard layouts, which I guess makes sense considering it's built right into the keyboard. The Pi 400 will both be available as a kit and as an individual board. Looking at the kit, it will cost $100 in the States and $135 in Canada. And the kit includes the Raspberry Pi 400, it includes a 16 gig micro SD card pre-programmed with Raspberry Pi OS, a Pi power supply, the Pi mouse, one micro HDMI to HDMI cable, and one official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. If you're looking at picking up a Pi 400 keyboard only, it will set you back 70 bucks in the States and 94.75 in Canada. In terms of value here, the Pi 400 continues to be interesting. It is $15 more than the stock Pi 4 but the kit is $20 less than the Pi 4 kit. And although it's $15 more than the Pi 4, something else to consider if you buy a case for the Pi, that will set you back a few dollars as well. And then if you buy a keyboard on top of that, it will set you back even more and the price will come out more expensive than the Pi 400. Now, in terms of the cooling for the Raspberry Pi 400, this is where things continue to be interesting. The Pi 4 is notorious for running extremely warm and the Pi 400 is clocked even higher than the Pi 4 right out of the gate. But it looks like the entire keyboard here is acting as a giant heatsink. This looks like a metal slab that runs the entire length of the keyboard, in which case heat management might actually be very good and it might work very similar to the way a Flerk case works. Right now, there are three main drawbacks that I can see with the Raspberry Pi 400. The first one might be in regard to overclocking. It's extremely easy to overclock a Raspberry Pi. The main concern is to make sure it remains cool. With a Raspberry Pi 4, you can do some minor overclocks by simply sticking it into a Flerk case. But if you want to do some major overclocks, you have to stick a massive heatsink on it to make sure that sucker stays cool. With the Pi 400, your options here might be pretty limited because they specifically state there are no user serviceable parts inside the Raspberry Pi 400 and opening the unit is likely to damage the product and will invalidate the warranty. So you might not be able to do anything to increase cooling. The second drawback to the Pi 400 is its form factor. If you need a Raspberry Pi that can fit into small spaces, the Pi 400 is very limited due to the fact that it's a keyboard. And the third drawback is the fact that it's built right into the keyboard. So if something happens to the keyboard, maybe a key stops working, you'll probably have to buy a brand new Pi 400. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. I am really excited about this Pi 400. I think this device is pretty darn cool. I'm liking what the Pi Foundation is doing. It reminds me a lot of the Commodore 64 where everything was built into that keyboard. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are about the Pi 400. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it too expensive or is it priced very well? If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you everyone. Take care.